Hello, DF exclamation point. Hope you're well. Question for John. Are you still using the Quest 3? What apps slash games have you been trying? I am playing Batman Arkham Shadows and it's great exclamation point. Uh, a bit of disclosure here. You actually did some consultancy work on, on Batman. So you're probably yeah. very happy to see the uh, the hugely positive response to that release, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did I did a little bit of stuff with them on that. So that's why I haven't like reviewed it or anything. But it's, it's super cool. I have to admit, it turned out awesome. <laughs> uh, yes, I do still use the Quest fairly often, actually. And this year... So... My my go to still is a lot of the team beef stuff. Like I just I can't get enough playing what they've done, especially the Doom stuff. There's all the Quake, Doom Three, that stuff. Doom though, especially, just so awesome. But I also did played a lot of um, Humanity, uh, which was also on PSVR and PC. But like playing it on the Quest, it just was perfect because you just by removing the wire from the equation, it just made walking around that little scenery awesome. And for those that don't know, it's basically, it's from the, the Enhance, the, the guys behind Tetris Effect and, and Riz, obviously, uh, and others. And it has that same sort of trippy vibe, but you control that the, the shining light uh, dog, if you will. And it's basically like weird trippy lemmings. It's really cool. Hi. I also played through on the Quest, and this also came to PSVR too, and I actually really recommend it. It's Max Mustard. I hate the name. I think the character looks extremely stupid, but I have to admit it's very good. These guys essentially said, "Hey, what if what if we tried to make a new Astrobot? Like the but like the VR Astrobot uh from PSVR 1." And they essentially made a game like that. It's not as good, but it's surprisingly good. Like it is actually like within like uh it's within an arm's reach of, of that Astro Bot on PSVR 1. And it's really only let down by the somewhat unappealing character. But mechanically, it does that same thing where you're doing full 3D platforming within like a very VR-oriented space, but you're bringing in tools and, and weapons and, and gear that you manipulate directly with your hands. So you're directly interacting with the environment, and then you're also platforming around that environment with the third-person character. So it's super, super cool. I do recommend that as well. And yeah, Batman Arkham Shadow. They clearly set out to make just like a stunning looking game for this thing. And it really is like, I would have to say, possibly the best looking thing I've seen uh, on the quest so far. Just in terms of like understanding, they understand the limitations of what this hardware is. And then they built this like, very beautifully lit dark environment that places a uh, sort of like really prioritizes like light and shadow in a way that we don't really see typically in quest games but it feels like lessons learned lessons from looking at stuff like i would say metal gear solid 2 like how do you do great lighting when you don't have like the hardware budget to do all all of this in real time like modern games right so they're very particular about where they do the lighting and the shadow and how it's all comes together. And it's, you know, it's pre-calculated stuff, but you know, when you have Batman shadow, like you to fly, you like grab your Cape and like pull it out like this. And like, when you see that shadow out in front of you spread across by a light source at your rear, it just looks super cool. And they somehow managed to translate the mechanics of like an Arkham game into VR like it really does. It's like Arkham Asylum, not the not the open world games. It's more like Arkham Asylum, where you're going through this sort of somewhat non-linear world. You're exploring, you're gaining new tools to access new areas. Uh, you're dealing with enemies along the way. There's puzzles, there's platforming, all this kind of stuff, all put together very nicely. And the way they did the the melee combat, just like that, the way the fists and stuff work it it manages to feel surprisingly good because the problem with fists in VR is that you don't have any pushback when you punch somebody yeah uh, in VR your fist keeps going right but they manage to do these these hit effects like when you finalize a punch you'll hit them and then it's almost like the game has this like slow motion effect where you slam against them they go flying and you kind of hold your fist in midair for a second lingering there as you send them flying so 
because they go flying, the way they react to it, it never feels like, oh, my fist should be going through them. Uh, I can't imagine how difficult it was for them to get that the melee feel right, but it actually works. Uh, plus the stealth stuff, like going up above, you know, it's got tons of the stealth sequences where you're up in the rafters, you know, you're using your little bat grappling hook to like move around above them and taking them all out. And it's exactly like the traditional Arkham games. So, uh, yeah, if you got a quest, definitely check all of, you know, check that out, check them all out and keep playing VR. I saw that story this week that, you know, it's a lot of developers are, can't justify making VR and the market is tough right now, but there is still cool stuff being made, including on PSVR two, by the way, like all the platforms have good stuff coming out. And I do think it's worth, it's still worth playing VR today. It is still a okay. cool medium. I only wish we could see something else like a half-life Alex level of production value. That game still feels like an anomaly. It's like, what if the whole industry went towards these, like, you know, high, super high end experiences, uh, and you get a glimpse of what that might be. And then nobody's ever been able to follow it up. It's just not realistic <laughs> business wise. Okay. Valve is like one of the only companies in the world that could realistically make something like that. Right. Like they have the, the spare capital and this desire to push technology in interesting ways to do it, but nobody else really does. 